Their mission? To fold a piece of paper that's almost the size of a football field. The biggest attempt of its kind in the world. It's huge. Oh. I don't know if this is going to be big enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because there's not a piece of seamless paper on the planet big enough, the plan is to get 17 individual rolls and lay them out side by side. Covering 170 by 220 feet, the team will join them together with double-sided tape. Then they'll use whatever methods necessary to try and fold it into a submission. Basically, you're going to have to fill this whole area. Yeah, well, we have um, 170 feet this way and 220 this way before we get to any equipment. So will that work out for us? Yeah, it's perfect to scale up an 8.5 by 11 sheet. Dude, this is going to be a long day. <laughs> we have a lot of work. Then let's roll. All the way back right to this All corner right here. Right there. The paper they're using is special order. This is the thickness of regular office paper, about three thousandths. What we tried to do in the shop where we couldn't get seven folds was twice as thick as this. And when you're talking about trying to achieve this myth, thickness of the paper is really important. Going larger and thinner might just give them the edge they need to beat this myth. They position the first roll, give it a push, and they're off. This is gonna be the biggest piece of paper ever. <laughs> 16 more to go. Their first 220 feet of scroll has been successfully unrolled. To secure roll number two, they need double side tape. Inch by inch, they press the sticky stuff along the edge of the paper. Keep it, keep it in line. Now, this, folks, is an example of highly focused, synchronized taping teamwork in action. Time to truck in roll number two. Coming down. Roll down, tape down. I think we get the concept. I hear this is good for your back. The art of paper folding is an intricate and time-consuming pursuit that is also often very rewarding. As they set up for the biggest paper folding attempt in history, our team is having difficulty appreciating this. Maybe I just lie here and it'll get itself done. The problem that we have right now is I don't think any of us is realizing exactly the kind of scale we're talking about for this experiment. Essentially, this is a sheet of paper the size of a football field. And just maneuvering that, even seaming it together so it's one piece of paper, is going to be a major, major challenge. Better put them in lockdown so they can't escape. So it sounded so much easier on paper. Back at the pool, Jamie and Adam are testing ways to escape a car that's plunged into the drink. They've already discovered that if you wait for the cabin to fill with water so the differential pressure equalizes and releases its grip on the doors, it could be too late. Now, they're going to try out a modified survival technique. Oh, here we are, day two. The first maneuver on their cheating death checklist is to try and open the door before the car starts to sink. I figure for this particular technique to work, you need to do it right the minute you hit the water. If you hesitate, it's all over and you gotta ride it out. Here we go. Like it. Adam's plan of action is, I'm just gonna wait until the water gets up to my ankles and then I'm gonna try and open the door. There we go. Oh, man. Oh, that sound is so wrong. The water rushes in. OK, I'm starting to see it on the floor. And it's coming up to my ankles. Now I'm going to try and open the door. And Adam rushes out. <laughs> Surface exit via the door, totally viable. I waited until the water was up to the top of my shoes, and I was still able to push this door open. The water rises slowly upwards. Next, he's going to wait until it gets to his waist. Okay, past my shoes, halfway up my shins. All right, now I'm looking at, my God, it said my knees. I'm not going to be able to open this door. All right, wait. This one's no pushover. As the water level climbs, so does the amount of pressure. And Adam has to brace himself against the opposite door to force it open. 